Can you introduce me or do I do that? I will intro. Okay. <laughs> okay, we are going live. So welcome everyone to the third session of the First Do No Harm Summit. We are having such a great time so far. It has been absolutely amazing. Um, so we've already had two of our sessions, one last night talking about the keys to, our, uh, to the stronger bond. And uh, earlier this morning, Lisa Marie popped up to talk about how to think business in this changing world. Um, the recordings to those sessions, if you happen to miss them, they are still live in our Facebook group. Alternatively, um, you can actually, um, you will actually get the recordings emailed out to you a little bit later this afternoon. Um, once we've got the first four um, sessions out of the way, I'll send all four recordings out to you guys so you can come and binge watch on a Saturday night in Queensland. So I'm actually kind of excited for this one. Um, bit fitting um, has become quite interesting for me and um, I'd love to welcome across Anna. But before I introduce Anna to you guys, I wanted to give you guys uh, a little bit of housekeeping for consideration. So if you see my video and I'm looking over to the left, which is probably the right side to you guys, um, that is because I am literally looking at the Facebook stream because unfortunately the comments through Facebook aren't coming up in Zoom. Um, so if you see me looking away, it's not me paying attention or playing funny games on Facebook. It is just me um, checking out for some extra comments or questions that Anna may, have, uh, may receive during the session. Um, Anna has a really amazing presentation and if you have any questions at any stage, please feel free to post them. I'll keep an eye out on them as they're coming through uh, and we will um, interject and ask them as we go through. If I happen to miss them at some stage, um, don't worry, I've, uh, I will take note and go through them all again so that right at the end of Anna's presentation, we can just cover off on those ones that we might have skipped ahead of before we could actually get a chance to answer. So without further delay, I am going to introduce Anna from The Bit Fitter. Welcome, Hi everyone. Um, thank you, Sarah, for all the work that you've done in organising this. Um, I know it's probably been never ending, um, but hopefully this goes smoothly. So thank you for joining uh, everybody who is joining us now and who might watch this on replay. Um, I've put together a bit of a presentation specifically for this topic um, for obviously it's called First Do No Harm. So something that I see really often in horses is mouth wounds. So I'll just a little bit explain me, ha, huh, a bit, ha, huh. um, So I've been in the horse industry for quite a long time. Um, I've been an oncology vet nurse for a long time, qualified at Quine Dentist for about 10 years, which is why I became a bit fitter because I am so sick and tired of seeing wounds in horses' mouths when I go and treat my patients and their poor owners have got no idea that it's happened, no idea why, no idea how to fix it. Um, people don't even know that they're there because it's quite a tricky thing to examine. I've got all the gear and the lights and the stuff in there so I can actually really get a good look and see what's going on in the mouth, um, which most owners aren't privy to being able to do without um, knowing how to check correctly without getting your fingers chomped off. Um, so I've been bit fitting for about six years. Um, I've done a lot of studies in the UK. Um, I was over there last year and I'm also enrolled in the ICPBC, International College of Professional Bit Fit Consultants uh, in Holland uh, currently. And I've been doing that course for about 12 months. I've got a little bit more to go. Um, and that is a really well-regarded college um, course in Holland. Um, and I hope that that will give me all the answers because I just found that bit fitting is very misunderstood Bitting in general is very misunderstood. I couldn't find the answers in Australia that I wanted. I wanted to know more and why and how and why do we do this and why do you use this? And, and, and that doesn't make any sense to me logically. And I know about anatomy and that that's stupid. Um, so I went overseas to get a lot of my um, lot of my sort of information. So anyway, that's a bit about me. So what I'm going to do today is a little bit start with um, mostly the talks about anatomy because obviously the injuries that we see with beating are related directly to the anatomy. So there's four major components to the mouth that are at risk of injury. 
So we've got the lips, we've got the tongue, we've got the palate, and we've got the bars. So I've got my little friendly ah, little head. Um, so I can explain a little bit about how it works. Obviously, we don't have any of the soft tissue stuff on him here, but um, I will be showing some photos that explain uh, what all that anatomy looks like from an inside perspective, because you guys as horse owners don't get to see that. You see the outside, the lip, maybe some teeth and a bit of tongue, and that's about it. So um, we need to sort of understand what things going on on the, um, on the inside of the mouth. So I'll just keep him here on my lap for now. Uh, so firstly, I'll discuss the lips. So the lips are the major part of um, the mouth that gets injured. So the lips are definitely the most common area for injury. They're much, much thicker than what we think. You would think looking at your horse's lips, if you look at this part, the commissure, which is where the top and bottom lip meet, you think it's quite thin. So in this picture, you can see where I've got the circle. Um, the part that you see on the inside of the outside of the mouth, sorry, is the commissure. So it's the actually narrowish part. Um, and until you like peel all of that open, you don't know how much lip tissue is in there. So most of them are about probably 30 mil thick. So about that thick on either side. And when I open them up um, and sort of peel them inside out a little bit, you can see um, a lot more tissue than you realize initially is in there. Uh, they, their job really, I mean, obviously their job is to eat, help them eat, um, push the food to the back of the mouth. Um, they're really, they, a lot of horses have quite tough lips. So they're supposed to withstand prickles and things like that as they're eating. Um, they do cushion the bit. So the upper part and the lower part of the bit will actually cushion, of, of the lip will cushion the bit. Um, and that will prevent any tongue injuries and hopefully bar injuries. So they do get injured very, very regularly. And I would probably 50% of lip wounds that I see are caused by sharp teeth, uh, which I can fix because I'm kind of lucky that I can do that. So it's generally the outside edges of the upper first premolars. So the very, very front of the first premolar, the rostral part of the, the premolar and the sides of the first and second premolars. Um, really common that's why we smooth that it those edges off make sure there's no sharp bits make sure there's no little even a tiny little the littlest sort of bit of extra enamel with a bit pulling the lips toward the teeth can damage damage the lip tissue so the other thing that i want you guys to realize and maybe you can check with your own horses um don't get your fingers bitten off but if you open the lip up you'll actually see that inside the lip there's a heap of really really loose tissue like floppy tissue. Some horses I open the mouth and they've got like, you could make a whole extra horse out of all the lip tissue they've got. So this tissue is very, very at risk of being damaged by the bit. So horses with extra lip tissue tend to be your heavy breed horses, um, your Percherons, some warm bloods, um, the heavier, my cobs got heaps of it. Um, so that the heavier breeds tend to, the Arabs and the thoroughbreds, not as much, but certainly you do see a lot of it in them as well they have no control over this lip tissue. So that just kind of hangs in the breeze and flops around all over the place. The tongue they have control over um, and the lips to a point, the commissure part of the lip they have and the outside part of the lip they have control over, but not all that inside tissue. So I just urge you guys to just have a look. So the best way to do it is really to just sort of get the, the lip, sort of open the lips up a little bit and you're looking really where the bit sits, particularly on the bottom, you'll see all of that floppy tissue. So that will, when I'm doing a bit fitting, that will come into play as well, um, that lip tissue as to what sort of bit I can put in that horse's mouth. So the next slide we've got is some examples of some wounds. So this is sort of how the presentation is stacked up. So I've got an example of what the, the normal anatomy looks like and then some wounds to that part of the anatomy. So you can see with this one, um, the first slide on the left is very, very common injury. I saw two of them yesterday. Um, one in a little 12 hand kids pony and the other one in a like trail riding western like trail riding type horse so it's not all dressage riders it's not all jumpers it's not all you know it's huge spread across the board and generally that's just because the bits don't fit the horses so this wound here on this left slide is um, from pinching of the bit because the bit's too big um, the bit slides sideways and I actually had a mention to Sarah if she wanted to um, pop me on the big screen so I can actually show you guys what how this happens that might be the easiest way so Sarah if you want to flick me over to the the main screen I think I've got it 
Okay, cool. I have no idea. So, <laughs> all right, well, I'll just keep going. Um, and I guess, yeah, hopefully that works because on mine, I've still got my presentation, so I can't see, but I'll try and do this. So a lot of bits obviously have a join in the center and that join can range in fairly generous size joints like this one to fairly small joints like this one. You can see how the joints are quite little. Um, so some bits will pinch more than other bits. So I find the joints that are quite generous in size aren't quite as pinchy, but I still get a lot of pinch wounds from double jointed bits. And I love them. They're my favorite bit in general, um, but they do pinch. So you need to be careful of the size. So what happens is the bit slides, as we use the right rein and the left rein of the bit, the bit slides laterally in the mouth. And this is common with the pinch wounds. So what will actually happen is the bit will slide into the lips and it'll get pinched and that tissue will get sucked in and pulled into those joints and damaged and pinched like that. So again, some bits will do it more than others, um, but generally you've got to be quite careful with double jointed bits. Um, a bit like this with a joint like this would, you know, pinch as well. So you've got the, you can see the, the joint in that one as well. So all jointed bits are at risk of pinching mouths. Um, oh, I've lost you, Sarah. That's okay. Um, yeah, so please ask any questions about this if you've got them. Um, but yeah, just something to be really careful of. Now, the reason that this bit's sliding side to side is because the bit is too big. So that's the number one thing that I see in horses is too big a bit. So if you put the bit in your horse's mouth, you pull it to the side till the cheek, the lip is, is hard up against the cheek and you've got this much bit hanging out, you've got way too, your bit's way too big. Um, you've got to be a bit careful about that. So make sure that you've got a fitting bit. So you can see again, there's some other examples of the, the slides here that have got um, pinch wounds. So really common um, so things I see every single day. So just want you guys to be aware of that and check your own horses and they can be quite hard to see. So you really have to like peel. And I think this is why nobody's talking about it because you can't see them as a rider and as an owner, you don't know that that's in there. Um, and if you continue to ride the horse, you know, I'll show you some slides later that are pretty awful because a horse at some point will get jack of that happening, put the tongue over the lip and try and protect the lip. The tongue will start to get injured and then they'll move the tongue and that's when you end up with bar injuries and then you've got a horse that you can't get a bit in its mouth at all. So when an owner says to me, oh, the, rider, the horse doesn't want me to put the bit in, I go, uh, okay, what's going on here? So I have a really good look and sometimes it can take me a couple of minutes to really examine the tissue properly to find any injuries. So do have a look in your in your horse's mouths or ask your dentist next time they're there with the um, the gag to open it up and have a really, really good look, see if they can find anything in there. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Before which, you do, Anna, yep. um, I've got um, someone on Facebook that's just asked if you can run that um, past again. I think she's referring to um, how the bit sliding pinches the lips. Yes, okay. So it's a little bit tricky. So have you got me on the big screen? It's not showing in the Facebook group on a big screen. So um, they'll, oh, just have I, to, they'll just have to peer very closely. Okay. All right. So when you've got a bit that's a little bit too large, so you might have this much, it could be this, this much too big. Um, half an inch even can do it. And as the rider is using the right rein and the left rein, the bit is laterally sliding in the mouth like that, sliding side to side. So if you put the bit in your horse's mouth, and you take contact on more, stand on the ground next to your horse, put the bit in, pull one rein until your lips are hard up against here. And if you've got any extra hanging out, there's a good chance that you'll be doing a bit of potential injury to the lips. Because what happens is as the bit slides laterally, all this floppy tissue, which is very hard to explain unless you can see it, um, all this floppy tissue will get sucked in and pulled into these joints. So in the joints is where the most common areas for pinching is. And you can see on that bottom right slide that it's right up next to the joint of the bit. And that's just because that lip tissue has been pulled into that joint and pinched. Um, the lip tissue, like I said, is very, very floppy and the horse has very little control over that lip tissue. So it just gets pulled and yanked and, and injured um, quite regularly. So it is something just to, just to watch for. I do have a video, I think, on my Facebook page about that lip tissue. I do explain at a point, like I peel it all open on my pony and show everybody. So um, I can maybe put a link up to that later. 
Yeah, but, um, Nancy said it was great. So very good explanation. Thank you. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> no, I'm glad though. Ask questions if, if I can um, if I can make things a bit more easy to understand. So this wound is caused by friction, again, from a bit that's too large. So you will see a bit that's too big, this part of the bit, which is called the cannon of the bit. If this is too big, it will rub like this on the lips. So obviously you're on more of an angle like this, and this bit will rub on the lip, just rub, 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 rub. And that is a rider who um, perhaps um, could keep the hands a little more steady. So it often happens in riders that use particularly one, one rein more than the other um, or, or jumping as well because we've got to steer quickly and that sort of thing. Um, but the main culprit for this injury is the bit not fitting correctly. So the bit being, being too big. And when I went out to see this horse, this was just for a routine dental. This person had no clue that this horse had wounds like this. Um, and they were significant. Like they were, they were really significant wounds. So the horse has shown some uh, behavior on the saddle that's a little bit undesirable in terms of the bit. And I suspect this kind of thing's been going on for quite some time because the bit that she had in the mouth, I put it in and I pulled it to the side and there was like this much bit hanging out the side. So it's really big. So what it's doing is every time she's using the reins, and this, this person is not a rough rider by any stretch of the imagination. Um, she's not one of those riders you see going around doing this. Um, she's not. So the bit sliding and just this part of the cannon, just rubbing, 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 rubbing. Um, also, if the horse is a little bit anxious, there's not a lot of saliva going on. There's not a lot of lubrication going on. Um, we've got pinch wounds on one side and we've got friction wounds on the other side. So, and also you can see the two lots of wounds where I've got the two lots of arrows pointing. So as a rider, those outside arrows that you can see on that left slide, the outside arrows are something that you will be able to see as a rider. Um, that's quite easy to see, but you can see in relation to how far from where those injuries are, how far to the inside of the mouth those other ones are. So um, it's, and this horse is not very happy about me poking around its mouth. So <laughs> it was quite tricky to get those photos. So I'm, gl I'm glad we did though, because he was a really good example of a rider that just had no idea. And she was so upset when I told her, she was really devastated. We've set her up with a new bit. We've organized everything. I think we're going to be good. I've gotten word that the horse is much happier now in the, in the bit. She did have to give him a, a little time off to get these wounds to heal. Um, that's the other thing. If your horse has got wounds like this, don't get on them. Don't ride them. Don't put, well, bitless, go for it. Uh, but don't put a bit in their mouth unless they, sorry, these wounds have healed up a hundred percent. If you had a horse with a girth gall, you wouldn't stick a girth on it again until that had healed. So be really careful of that and just make sure the wounds have healed a hundred percent or they'll just get worse. Um, so this other little one on the bottom that we've got the bottom right hand side, the slide there has got those tears and that's generally from dental injury so the outside and, and enamel edges and I can see looking at those teeth that they have quite significant sharp points on them so the upper premolars generally are the, are the ones to blame um, and I would say both these injuries are from the upper premolars or they could have had the nose band shut down so tight that the horses had no choice other than to bite its cheeks off um, so that's another thing about dentistry if you're using a bit you need to get your horse's teeth done like you can't go over 12 months um, really nine months. I, I do my ridden horses every six months. Um, I would absolutely not go a day over 12 months. And even at that, most horses, you're risking them being sharp because it doesn't take long for them to develop those points. Um, and most of them firstly will develop them on the, the top outside edges. So that's just something that you've got to be aware of. Um, so I thought with this as well, I do a bit of myth busting. Does anyone want to ask, have we got any questions before I do this bit? Uh, no more questions at the moment, but lots of comments. Um, poor ponies, excellent photos, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I say when I see these. Yep, yep. And that's why I need to tell people about it because nobody knows and we've all been given all the wrong information and we all got told at Pony Club, this is what you should do and this is how it is. And that was 30 years ago and it's all wrong. So <laughs> we can we can sort it. So the first myth I thought I would bust, and I heard somebody, somebody even said this to me today. Oh, I see riders going around in bits that are way, way, way too small. No, 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 no. Um, so when you go to the shop and you go to get a loose ring bit, so this is a loose ring snaffle, the ring moves through, freely through the ball hole of the bit, um, as opposed to something like this, which is an egg butt. Fixed ring, 
everybody will say you need to get a bit little bit bigger if you're going to go for a loose ring because we don't want the horse's lips getting pinched in this hole um in all the bit fittings i've done i've never ever seen the outside of the lip get pinched in this hole here i'm sure yes it does happen um but i'm sure it happens more because the riders are pulled on one rein and then this bit's hard up against the, the face and it's sucking the, the lip in so the lip tissue on the outside of the horse like i said is much less um likely to get pinched than the stuff on the inside so be really careful with that advice i would absolutely not get a half an inch size bigger because then you're going to end up with this much extra bit and all this lateral sliding of the bit so if you're worried if you like my bit on my pony his lip comes right to the ball hole right to there and that's really where you want it you don't want it covering the hole but you want it right up to the hole because also remember when you take contact generally you'll actually have more bit sticking out the side if you're worried, get a pair of these. They're not hard to put on. They used to be in like circa 1992 when I was venting, trying to get them on a bit. But these ones slide on really easily over the top of the ring and they will sit like so and they'll protect your horse's lips. If you're really worried about your horse getting pinched, put these on. And I know they're not legal for competition, but let's face it, we do 99% of our riding and training anyway. Take them off before your dressage test or before you competition, put them back on the next day and continue on your merry way. Um, and you can get really cool colors. So like if you want fluoro pink ones, you can. Um, good ones for ponies too. So this is a different size to this one. This one's quite small. Um, you can get these little ones for pony faces as well because these look a bit dumb on little pony heads. Um, so that is, and they're just as easy to get off as well. Boop, done. Not like the old days where we used to have to soak them in boiling water to <laughs> stretch them on. Um, so again, don't get a size bigger in a loose ring. Just put bit guards on. Again, like I said, I don't think I've ever done a bit fitting when I've actually seen pinch wounds on the outside of the mouth. So you want it to be snug. Again, like I said, lip right to the edge of the bore hole and you don't want any bit hanging out the side. So if you pull, the easiest way to tell this because the horse can actually get the tongue and drop the bit like bleh, push it down. So it will look sometimes when the bit is in the mouth with no pressure on it, like it fits. So what I want you to do is just take one rein, move it over so that the lip is hard up against the bore hole there. And then you see how much you've got sticking out the side. So if you've got this much sticking out the side, you're good to go. If you've got an inch or half an inch, you'll be surprised, um, then your bit is too large. And 99.999% of the bit fittings I do, people have bits that are too big because we always went, oh, I better get a size bigger than a size too small, um, which is not true because the injuries that I'm seeing on the insides of mouths are caused by bits that are too big, not bits that are too small. So, and like I said, you know, if they do get an injury on the outside of the lip, it's usually a pretty minor one. So the next myth is the two wrinkle rule. So this is one we were all taught in Pony Club. I know I was two wrinkles and the bit will fit. Nah, crap, totally untrue. Um, it's true for some horses, but it's certainly not true for the vast majority of them. So what I want you to do when you're fitting your bit is to make sure the fit the bit fits inside the mouth. So you want to open the lips, see where the bit is. If you can pull it down and it bangs down on the upper canine, it's way too loose. Uh, you don't want the bit being so high that the horse is walking around like this with a smile. I've got a mare with a really long lip. If I put two wrinkles in her bit, it would be up near her ears somewhere and she'd be like, ah. So you do need to just adjust it. Don't go by the holes that are on your bridle because the holes on your bridle are that usually that wide at minimum. Um, that much in a mouth is, a, is, a, is the difference between a bad fit and a bad fit. The good fit might be somewhere in between. So we're talking millimetres to get the fit right here. So you might need to punch some extra holes in your bridle. Um, make sure your bridle is even on both sides too because I see a lot of horses that have got three holes on one side and one on the other. And the person's going, oh, the bit doesn't fit. And they run from side to side trying to get it to fit evenly, but the holes are all wrong. Um, so do just make sure that your holes are, are level from the top. Um, yeah, so that's something to be really careful with. You're fitting to the internal mouth, not the external mouth. So you're not just looking at the outsides of the lips and going, oh, yeah, she'll be right. That fits. So I do want you to just check. Um, sometimes you'll see the palate ridges and you can actually sit the bit like right in net rested in like a little nook of the palate that can be really helpful um, and then that way generally the curvature of the bit will fit the curvature of the palate so that's a really nice thing way to do if your horse's mouth allows for it um hope that makes sense i'll move on um so the next part that i'm going to talk about quickly is the tongue have we got any questions sarah that i need to stop for 
Cool. Okay. Um, so the tongue is probably the second most important part about bitting and it is probably the second most injured part with the bit. So it is really thick. It fills the whole cavity of the mouth. You can see on that top slide that that's pretty typical. So with your horse's teeth together, the insides together, open the mouth and see how much room there is for a bit. And I'll guarantee you there's not an awful lot. Some horses have got quite a high palate, which lends themselves to um, a bit more space. They are actually breeding warm bloods at the moment for high palates so that people can fit double bridles in their mouth. Um, so that's something that a lot of horses um, do tend to have a, a higher palate and that's usually a, a breed breed predisposition, but now it's being bred for. Um, because when you come to do a double bridle, you've got to fit two bits in the mouth that are about yay big. So you do need a bit of room in there. So your horse's tongue thickness will dictate the type of bit that you can use. You can't stick a big, fat, thick bit in a thick-tongued mouth because all you're going to do is displace the tongue. Um, the tongue will move. You will then get pressure more on the lips on one side, more on the bars, um, and then you'll be in a bit of trouble. So the last thing you want to do is make the tongue uncomfortable. Now, the interesting thing about the tongue is that when we look at it as horse owners, we see the flat part at the front, but what we don't often see is that lumpy part at the back that I've got on the bottom slide that's got a black circle around it. Now, this is really, really important. When your horse is taking contact in a dressage type way, this part of the tongue will actually move forward and press into the back of the bit. So you've got two angles of bit. I'm just trying to find a good bit that I can... You've got two angles of bit when it comes to the tongue. You've got the bottom part of the bit here that's sitting on the flat bottom part of the tongue. You've also got this big lumpy part of the back of the tongue pressing into the back of the bit. It's just gone a bit dark. Yeah, pressing into the back of the bit there. So you've got flat part here, lumpy part here. So that back lumpy part of the tongue needs to press forward into the bit in order to take contact. Now, what that does is it changes the angle of the hyoid so that you end up getting a lot more shoulder freedom, which extends all the way down to the back of the horse, which gives you more, which gives you more hind, gives you more hind leg, more hind leg freedom, and put them in something that I know they'll be more comfortable in, and you get about a foot more hind end. So they just come through in the back leg and they come through in the shoulders, all because this tongue is free. So they're free to press the tongue forward, um, which then means they're not compressing it. The hyoid's not compressed. All that muscle isn't tense. They really stretch out into, into the contact, which is sort of what you want. Um, so we're not just fitting for the flat part of the bit. And this, it gets way complicated at this point, but I'm not going to go into that. Um, so like I said, the attachment goes from the tongue to the shoulders and the hind legs. There is, I mean, Katie will know about all this stuff. So she'd be a better, a good one to ask. But yeah, you do get attachment through the whole horse. Um, so freeing the tongue will free up the hind legs and it will free up the shoulders dramatically. Like I've seen huge change, horses that move like this, then you change the bit and all of a sudden they've got all this like shoulder freedom and you've got, you know, instead of having a, a walk that's a seven, you end up with a walk that's a nine or a 10. So those sorts of things can be massively impacted by bitting. Um, the next thing I'll show you is a little bit in terms of, I don't have a lot of photos of tongue injuries because to be perfectly honest, I don't see them that often. I normally see old tongue injuries that happen during racing. This one on the left is one I saw as, um, I think I was a student when I saw that. Um, that's a tongue tie has done that. Um, pretty common that tongue ties do injuries. Mo you know, a lot of off the track thoroughbreds and standard breads that I see have got tongue injuries from tongue ties. As a bit fitter, I don't see them that often uh, because the horses are pretty good at getting the tongue out of the way when it's uncomfortable. So the other photo on the top right that I've got is a cross section of a skull. And you can actually see that the thing I've got circled in my beautiful artwork drawing in red is the tongue. And you can see how the tongue fills the entire cavity of the mouth. Um, and right up the back on the bottom, there's an insertion of, it's really hard to see in this photo, actually. There's an insertion of bone into the bottom of the tongue, which is the hyoid. So the bottom of the hyoid apparatus actually inserts into the tongue. Um, and then it's attached by all these other bones that you can see on the bottom slide in black and white there. So that's uh, the different hyoid processes, the basiohyoid, the, there's bunch of different little bones in there those bones the big main ones um i actually have one but i didn't put it out is about it's about this thick that would be generous they're about that thick so they're really easily damaged you can break them they're quite flexible but you can break them so you've got to be quite careful again you're not wanting to bring the tongue back and compress the tongue in the back of the mouth you're wanting that nice stretching into the bit uh next bit of myth busting 
The thick bit's the kind bit. How many of us have heard that? I've heard that a million times. That's what we were all taught in pony clubs. So I very dutifully went to the shop and I bought the thickest, fattest bit I could find for my horse. This is probably about, I don't know, 15 years ago before I, no, probably, probably 12, 13 years ago before I was um, doing dentistry. And I went, oh yeah, he's a warm blood. Five and a half inch will do because it's a loose ring. So I better get an inch, half an inch bigger than what I thought I need. Um, and he's a warm blood. So he has a big mouth. In reality, now that I know more, this horse had like the itty bittiest little lips and itty bittiest tiny little mouth. And I put that in him and I wondered, oh my God, my horse is chewing the bit. I better put a bigger nose band on him. Oh, he's doing this. He's doing that. We've all done it. I've done it. Now I know better. So this big fat thick sucker, which is probably 20 mil. Whoa. Yeah, it's a 20 mil bit. So this is huge. Um, I would, there's very few horses I would recommend this bit for. Um, that's going to displace the tongue in most horses. Um, they will not like it. They will try and move away from it. They will pull that tongue out of the way. Uh, they will start to open the mouth. They will chew. They will gag. They will do all sorts of weird stuff with it. So if your horse is going ar, 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 with the bit and you've got a big sucker in its mouth like this, maybe just try and go down a size. <laughs> Um, the reason that this sort of came into question with, well, came to be fact um, with the thick bits is because obviously you've got more surface area where the bit is thicker. So where you've got more surface area, you're evening out the pressure and in theory, you're not applying as great a pound per square inch or kilo per square inch to the bit as you would be with this. So this is evening out that, that pressure per square centimetre. Um, then say something like that that's quite thin. So you'll get more kilo per square I mean yeah pounds per square kilometer kilo. how do they I don't even know it's probably like kilo per square in square centimeter but I've been studying American stuff um, pounds per square inch on that side um, in that thin bit then you will get this big thick sucker so um, a very thin bit can be way too sharp for a lot of horses so I see some horses in like 10 mil bits those little French um, little um sweet iron bits that are quite thin um, if you're not using a heap of contact, those bits are really nice because they sit in the mouth. They're pretty benign. They don't get in the way. They don't mean the horse doesn't pull his tongue out of the way. A lot of horses really like them. They're often a little bit too sharp for horses that are worked in a contact. Um, so what you do with your horse will depend on the type of thickness. So most horses like a thickness of about 12 to 14 mil. That's a pretty good width. And when we measure a bit, we measure it the closest to the borehole possible. So the very, very outside edge of the bit, we take our measure and we just measure from straight across here to straight across here. And it's always done on the side where the ring is. So I don't, we don't measure this part here. We measure across this way here. So most bits, if you buy them brand new, will have a width already on, on the label. Um, so yeah, like I said, it will depend on a little bit on the thickness of the bit you choose, will depend on your horse's level of training, um, if you're going to go do cross country and your horse has a bit of a sensitive mouth and you need to, you know, you need to use some rain pressure. Um, I wouldn't recommend a 10 millimeter bit. Um, I think they're now illegal for EA eventing. Yeah. There was all that palaver that went on with the rules last year, but that's essentially why they've made the rules, why they've made them because thin bits do do damage to horses mouths. Um, and that's again, depending on the training, the rider's hands, it's got a whole bunch of different, um, dependencies, depending on what we're, we're looking at. So um, I will go to the next slide. Is that good for questions? No, 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 no questions. questions. Okay, cool. Um, so we are going to look now at the hard palate, which is the um, part of the roof of the mouth. Despite the fact that it's called the hard palate, it's actually quite squishy. So I would urge you guys, if you can, don't get bitten again, but pop your fingers in the mouth. Now, if you've got a boy horse, you want to be careful you don't get stabbed by a canine tooth. This one's a baby horse, so it doesn't have canines yet, but um, the canines will be about here. So you're pretty safe to stick your fingers about here and feel that tissue. So you just pop your fingers in the mouth and just feel how that tissue, so obviously that's the top of the bony part of the palate, um, but the, the, hard, the, sorry, the hard palate covers all of that tissue and it's really spongy and a lot of people are quite surprised at how soft it is. So what we do need to do is make sure that we don't do harm to that area of the mouth by using a bit that's not, a, not appropriate. So again, you can have a high palate, you can have a low palate. The horse in this photo, I would actually say he has a pretty high palate. 
Hard to see because I can't see the front. So oftentimes the palette can be quite steep at the back, but quite flat at the front. So again, have a look in your horse's mouth. If the palette is almost flat like that, then you've got quite a low flat palette. If you've got a palette that's a little bit more bridge like that, then you're probably a medium. And some horses literally have a palette that's like this, um, completely, really, really sort of semicircular in shape. So you can have a low palette or a high palette. Um, the canine teeth in male horses can interfere a little bit with bitting. So you do need to make sure when you're putting your bit in, if your bit is hitting the canines, if you can pull it forward and it's hitting the canine teeth, it's way too loose. Um, so lift it up, um, make sure that it, it can't come into contact with those canines because that's really annoying for a horse to like, have a bit banging into their teeth all the time. Um, now those ridges, I have seen bruising and I have seen injuries to the palate, but it's really hard to get a photo of it. Um, so... I haven't got any pictures of actual injuries. No, I don't. Um, so what we often find, and this is a little bit of a myth buster in itself. Um, a lot of us think that when we use um, a single jointed snaffle, we get this part jabbing up into the palate. Like how many of us have heard that part um, about getting palate injuries and poking into the palate? Um, unless your horse is going around with its nose in the air and its ears pointing downwards, that's physically impossible to happen. So what we do see quite often is especially a loose ring bit, but when you consider, so this is a little bit to think about in terms of um, the positioning of the bit in the mouth. When you've got a horse who's more or less on the bit, your bit's going to be at about that angle. So your nose is pointing towards the ground and your ears are up at the highest point, or the pole, whatever. Um, it's just now remember dark on your end so you might just want to demo a little longer okay cool all right so you'll have the bit facing this way so if your horse is on the bit um on the vertical nose on the ground ears up above um, you will have this sort of a picture now the palate is going to be running here and the tongue is going to be running here so it is physically impossible even if your horse pushes it up with the tongue into the palate, it's physically impossible for that bit to do that into the palate. There are some exceptions, but if you've got a loose ring bit or generally most bits without what's called a purchase, and I'll explain that in a minute, um, most bits that are um, just attached to the ring, so a direct action snaffle, most bits are going to hang downwards because you've got your cheek piece here and your reins are attached here. So the pressure trajectory of the bit is that way. And again, this is where it gets really mathematical and complicated. So I'm not gonna go into it and make it too complicated. Same deal with an egg butt bit like this. So again, your horse's head's on the vertical. I fail to see how this up into the palate is actually possible. Um, so we've been fed a lot of rubbish for a long time. Um, you, you can get rubbing of the top of the joint absolutely the top of the join will rub on the palate. That's very, very, very possible. Um, again, horses will often move the tongue so that the palate doesn't get damaged. They do all sorts of, why is it going black and white? Maybe I need to move away from the window a bit. Oh, yeah, that's that a lot better. Be. Yeah, sorry. It's just, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, so you, you'll have palate rubbing on here and you'll have tongue rubbing on this surface of the bit. Um, you're not going to have stabby stabby like this however doesn't always apply <laughs> just when I teach you a thing it then becomes complicated so say a bit like this right this is just a full cheek snaffle it's pointing downwards horse's head's on the vertical even if your horse's head's not not on the vertical wherever the horse's head is pointing you've still got the palate here and you've still got the tongue here so even if your horse is going around star stargazing like this palate is still here tongue is still here there is no way that that can change however if you take a bit like this and then you put bit guards on it, the bit will sit more like this. So you will then at that point have the palate here and the tongue here. So you're completely changing the angle of the bit. So, sorry, you'll still have palate there, but then changing the angle by putting bit guards on is then going to rotate the bit and it will push into the palate. Does that make sense? It gets kind of slightly complicated at this point. Um, so are you so referring just, on the, you're just referring to the bits that have those? I'm sorry, no, I for any where you change the angle. So and if you have this as it is, it's normal, it's fine. But when mm -hmm. you put 
when you put guards on, like, you know how with these bits, people often will put those little pieces of leather, the yeah. loops of leather onto the cheek pieces so that the bit doesn't get caught on stuff. Uh, yes. um, that changes the angle of the bit. So the other case where this is likely is if you've got something like a boucher, a single jointed boucher, again, where your normal bit will sit like this, the boucher cheek piece attaches here and the reins attach here. So when your horse's head's on the vertical, you've got this picture instead. So you've got reins attached here, cheek piece attached here. And for this reason, I hate single jointed vouchers. They're a horrible, horrible invention. Um, vouchers in general, I love. The cheek piece itself, I love. It's a completely inappropriate mouthpiece for this, this ring. And just because somebody made it didn't, doesn't mean it's a good idea. Um, so this is one that's um, a bit of a disaster in a mouth. And a lot of people say, oh, my horse hates vouchers. And then I see what voucher they've got. And I'm like, mm, that's why. Um, so we take it out of this. We put it in a different voucher with a different mouthpiece and we have no problem. Um, we also have, I was just going to show you quickly. So any bit really where um, you have an attachment for the cheek piece that's not on the original rain, uh, rain attachment. So when you've got your rain attached to the normal um, ring, cheek piece would be attached here. Rain would be attached here. It's called a level one mouthpiece where you go up and attach to this thing, which is called the purchase, you then have a level two mouthpiece. So just be really careful that if you're using a level two mouthpiece or something with a purchase on it, that you are going to be changing the way that the bit will sit in the mouth. So I'm not gonna get into where it gets really mathematical again and complicated, but hopefully that makes enough sense. Just so I just want you guys to be aware, don't just grab a bit off the shelf, stick it in the mouth. Um, I want you to actually think about where the bit will be sitting. So you have a regular snaffle, egg butt snaffle would sit there with a horse on the on the vertical. A voucher is gonna change and it's gonna sit like this because this is where your cheek strap will be and this is where your rein will be. So just be really aware of that fact when you change bits and you put draw reins on, you put side reins on, all of those things will completely change the effect that a bit has. Um, the normal trajectory of a bit, cheek piece rein is somewhat here. If you put draw reins on, you're changing completely the trajectory of the bit that way. So it will have a completely different effect on the tissue in the mouth. So that's just something to think about. Um, it does get much more complicated than that. And there's a whole lot of mathematical equations you can use to work it out, but it's going to bore, bore you to death. Um, so yeah, just be a bit careful too that your bit's not too big because if the bit's too big, it's going to go run up and down those ridges and the horse is going to get really jacked off about that. Um, so the next part, I basically just explained this. So the nutcracker effect that we all think about, we all think about this being the nutcracker effect. In fact, the nutcracker effect in truth happens between the cannons of the bit when the bit has pressure put on it. So you're having the tissue be compressed. So again, we're going to hold the bit up in the correct way that we would if we were using it in our mouth. And the tissue that we might have here is mostly going to be lip tissue because you've got your bars and your tongue sitting here. You've got your palate sitting here. So the part that gets compressed the most by the nutcracker action is the dynamic lip tissue. So you will get a lot of compression of that tissue and that is when you get all of that lip tissue pulled over the top into those teeth. So that's quite something that next time somebody talks about nutcracker action, you know that it, it doesn't refer to this part. It refers to this part between the cannons of the bit. So again, like I said, the joint generally will point rostrally, which is down towards the nose or towards the nose or towards the nose, depending on the angle that your horse's head is at. For the ease of simplicity, I just always talk about the horse's head being on the vertical. Um, and like I said, there's lots of tack and gear that will change the dynamic of that. Um, so remember anything with a purchase. So Kimber wicks, even a, even a, um, a bit like this that's got a way mouth, that will change a little bit, but most of these are not jointed bits, they're straight. So you're not gonna get, but you do get angle change of, of that mouthpiece in the, in the mouth. Any questions? Because that was kind of complicated. <laughs> um, so Joanne has asked, what effect do double jointed bits have on the palate? None. The only part, the only effect they will have is this joint. So the part of the mouth that's in contact with the palate is this part here. So the part of the top of the bit there that's going to be affected in the palate is just the joints. 
So that lumpy part there is going to affect the palate because the palate obviously is sitting here. So again, every bit is exactly the same. So again, the part of the palate that would be affected by this bit would be this part of the joint here, which is why I, I like certain joints on certain angles because they don't give a palate effect. Some bits have got a slightly twisted cannon so the joints are slightly twisted and that makes a much nicer experience with the palate for the horse. So these 90, or 90 degree sort of um, joints aren't always the best thing because you do have this in, in the tongue and you have this in the palate. Um, but, you know, if you look at then something like this, you have that in the palate and that in the tongue. So there's really nice options if you don't, you know, if your horse is particularly palate sensitive and it doesn't like anything sticking up in the palate, um, I would go for a small join um, with just, just pay attention to the, the surface. Cause again, I couldn't go to the average horse shop and find a bit off the shelf that I'd put on in my horse's mouth. Um, a lot of them are not well-made. So, you know, just because it's like I said, been made doesn't mean it's any good. Um, does that answer the question? Um, I'll give it a, it's usually about a 10 second delay to Facebook, oh, but um, doesn't seem to, no further questions so far, so. Okay, all right, cool. Well, uh, we've only got a few minutes left, so I'll move on really quickly to the next bit, which is the bars. Um, they're protected by the tongue and the lips, so generally I don't see an awful lot of bar injuries. They are not very common, but when they do happen, they're awful, um, really, really awful, and I see this this horse on the top slide is one I saw that was owned by a 12 year old pony club kid. Um, they can be all sorts of different anatomy. So this is why I bought my little head out here. So you can have bars that are quite sharp. This horse has got really sharp bars. In the talk that I do, I actually take an apple and I push the apple and it cuts the apple in half over these bars. They're that sharp. So very, very common that they'll get, um, this guy's actually got some bone spurs there most likely from the bit. They're not that easy to see. Um, bone spurs are really, really common, um, especially in sort of, you see them a lot in racehorses. Uh, they are covered in a very, very small, thin layer of mucous membrane tissue, like two to three mil, uh, which is very, can be easily damaged. Generally, if I do see damage to the bars, it's caused by a bit with a port in it, um, which I actually had one and now I've got lost it. I don't know where I put it. So a ported bit, like in the x-ray picture at the bottom, you guys can see that there's a, a way mouth. Sorry, I'm having a bit collapse. Um, you can see that there's a way mouth in that picture and that way mouth has a really high port. There is like no time that I would ever recommend that kind of way mouth in a horse's mouth. Now, I like the idea of this whole x-ray with the bit thing in it, but it's 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 kind of dumb because you can see that the bit is completely not sitting in the right spot. The bradoon is actually facing backwards, um, which should be, it should be facing that way, not that way. So it's not a very true representation of what a bit in a mouth looks like. Um, now the idea of the port is to give tongue relief, which is fine if you're a rider that never moves their hands. So in a port, when you get tongue relief, where's my dee 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 dee? Um, I like a port a little bit like this one, which is quite a low wide port. I like this. Um, a really high port, like you see in that x-ray photo, as soon as the rider moves their hands, that port is literally bumping against the outside of the bars. So that's how this injury happened on this horse. A, the bit was not fitted correctly and it was way too low. The tongue started to get bruised. So the horse went, eh, pulled the tongue out of the way. And then that bit has gone, eh, eh, jerked. It wasn't a way mouth. It was a like a Kimball wick. Um, and it bumped and just continued and continued to injure the horse's mouth. So they stuck a tighter noseband on it, did the, did the curb strap up tighter and gave it a spur. Um, so um, that horse was really, really upset. And that horse is probably going to have trauma for the rest of its life now um, and will need major rehabilitation when it comes to bitting. Um, I also want to give the kid a kick in the pants. Um, so it is very common with the ports that you will get um, tongue discomfort. The tongue will come out of the way and then you get the bar injury. So like I said, when the bar injuries happen, they're awful. Um, this is infected. These bar injuries were down to the bone. Um, awful. So I, they have to get a vet out to see that horse um, and it needs antibiotics and stuff. So 
Um, do check under the tongue as well. I would be surprised if any of you guys, because you're here, there's a very slim chance that your horse is going to have anything like this. Um, you're not the people that I see these types of things with um, in terms of bar injuries. So if you keep the tongue comfortable, the bar should be okay. Now you did, you can see a little bit of a pinchy wound on the bottom there, um, on that bottom right slide. Now that is one I saw with a jointed bit, but I think, I'm trying to remember what it was, but I think the horse pulled the tongue out and then the bit just, just not like just grabbed on the, the joints, just grabbed the, the bars at the bottom. So it's not that common. Um, but again, you know, do think about when you put a bit in your mouth, in your horse's mouth, where that port will sit. Um, because that port right now where it's sitting, so right now that bit on x-ray is sitting like this. So it's sitting like that. And that's when you've got a dressage horse on the vertical and you've got a way mouth sitting like that. That's what you want. You should get no more rotation than about there. Um, so you tell me how effective is that port with the tongue? It's not because you won't get any tongue relief until the bit is here. And at that point, you've got a horse with a broken jaw. So if you ever see a way mouth, it's got that much angle on it. Bad news. 45 degrees is about as much as you should end up with. Um, the curb chain should be effective enough that you don't use any more than that. Um, and the port is completely irrelevant in this situation because you're getting no tongue relief from it until it's here. Um, and then you will end up with a whole bunch of moving and bar injuries because the bit is just sliding. You can see there how it's fitted, sliding left and right. And you can see there how it bumps into the bars. And this is a very, very, very mild port. This is almost a beginner way mouth bit. Um, really top notch FEI horses will go really well in this as well. It's not very offensive. Um, it's a nice way mouth, but I say it's pretty hideous stuff out there as well. Um, yeah, so if you see a bit that says relieves bar pressure, um, it's not a thing. They should all relieve bar pressure. No bit should be saying that it uses bar pressure or it doesn't use, you know, I, I feel like using choosing a bit that specifically focuses on the bars of the mouth is really cruel and really unnecessary. And you've seen the kind of damage that it can do. So just be really, really careful of that. And I do come across a lot of bits that go, that claim to, like relieves bar pressure or, you know, works on the bars of the mouth. Half the time it's wrong because just mechanically and anatomically it can't. Um, but just be a little bit careful and also be, be careful of the claims that a lot of companies make because a lot of them are crock. Um, so, yeah, you, just, yeah. I was going to say, before you summarise, Erin um, has asked what's your opinion um, on a mullen? Uh, mullens are generally very good. Um, if a horse doesn't mind a little bit of pressure on the tongue, a mullen is great. I personally quite like a flexible mullen. It depends on the horse. Again, like, no, I can't just say this bit's great for every horse. Um, so a mullen bit, for those who aren't sure, is a straight bar bit like this. So any bit that's straight is referred to as a mullen bit. It can be on a loose ring. It can be on an egg butt ring. It can be on whatever kind of ring. Um, they're generally a good bit because you don't have the dynamic change in joint angles when you do different things with the bit. So it will be just a straight bar bit. It can work a little bit on the bars. If the horse doesn't like the tongue pressure, it can pull the tongue out of the way and then you get bar pressure. Um, so that's just something you've got to be quite wary of. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of straight metal uh, mullins. Some horses love them. I'm not a massive fan of them. If you've got a really soft horse that doesn't like jointed bits and is quite offended about any movement in the mouth and something like this can be really good. It's a flexible mullin, so it moves. Um, and it actually really invites the horse into the contact. I think depending on the discipline, you're going to find it quite difficult to get, going back to a few slides ago when I talked about that, that lumpy part of the mouth needing to go in and take the contact, you will find for dressage and mullen is not a, often a great choice because a horse really needs a curved bit that's anatomically shaped similarly to its mouth in order to take that pressure um, and, and push that, and stretch all that out. Um, you, you're probably not going to get great results um, with with um, higher level contact with a mullen, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Hopefully that answers it. Um, so yeah, basically what I want you guys to take away from this is thinking really carefully about the angling and the positioning of the bit under contact. Um, so it's a very different view from when your horse has hopefully got skin on it and he's standing still like this in the paddock. It's got its little top head on as well and you put the bin in its mouth and you go oh yeah that looks like it fits 
That looks good. Well, shouldn't use that. Yep, that looks good. And if I see another video explaining bits work like this, I'm going to scream. Um, that's not how they go. They go like this because your cheek pieces are holding the bit up. So the bit sits like this in the mouth. See? So that's what it looks like. Um, different story when you're sitting there looking at your horse going, oh, yeah, that looks like it fits. Um, take some rain pressure. Just put a little bit of rain pressure and see what the bit does. Move it around a little bit. Does it slide to and fro? Does it slide side to side? Um, and then if you're going to attach draw reins or side reins, again, you're changing the dynamic of the bit. So watch what your bit does. Um, check the mouth regularly for wounds. Make sure you um, really get in there in the business and have a look. Mostly the lips is the, the area to concern yourself with. Um, and make sure above all, above and beyond, is make sure your bit's the right size. So again, like I said at the start, if there's any bit hanging out the side, start again, get a smaller bit. Um, you don't want any hangage over the side. Um, and if you're not sure about that, contact me and I can help you. Um, the best way to measure is honestly put the bit that you've got, pull it over to one side, go, all right, I've got an inch extra hanging out the side. It's an inch too big. That's the really unfancy way to do it. You can make bit measures and all sorts of stuff, but really just going from a gauge of what you've got is, is generally okay, as long as you're looking at the same sort of style of bit. I hope that answers questions. <laughs> it's actually been really great. Um, there's already- a lot, um, a lot in an hour, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, there's a couple of people that have mentioned that they're going to need to rewatch it again, I think, to reabsorb the info <laughs> information. A lot, a lot. And um, I forget because it's stuff that's been in my head so long. I'm just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> uh, Katie said her biggest takeaway is just because someone made it doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> that's the one. There's a lot of stuff out there that's a complete waste of time. Like some of the stuff I'm like, like jointed um, curb bits. I'm like, they, they don't, uh, that's another talk. <laughs> um Lisa loves the fact that you said to do um dentals more often um because things can change super yep. quickly um so yeah yes. I think yeah. um the general feedback has been that everybody has absolutely loved your session today so thank you very very much now no I believe problem. you have a little bit of a um freebie offer is it choosing the right snaffle bit yeah, so I've got a downloadable PDF on my website, which is www.thebitfitter.com. Um, there's a downloadable PDF on there that you can click on the link and it will email you a copy of that PDF. And that really is just a brochure about how to choose a bit, how to choose the size, the width, what kind of cheek piece you want. It's, it's not in depth because it's really just a, a very basic view, uh, but that can help a lot of people, um, you know, get through some of the uh some of the misinformation that's out there and and help you guide you the right way like when you're looking at the shop the wall of bits in the shop going ah it'll just <laughs> narrow it down a bit for you I know um I'll be jumping on to have a bit of a look because I've already spoken to you <laughs> about bits and and um I'm one of those paranoid mothers who likes to make sure that everything is perfect so oh, everybody, when it comes to bits everybody has to be paranoid like we all have to be paranoid because we're not paranoid enough. And I'm, I'm just seeing these hideous things every day because people don't know. And, and I just have to get the word out there for, yeah, yeah. Make, make it a bit more available. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again so, so much for um, jumping in and, and sharing some of your knowledge with us. Um, the link to the PDF that Anna mentioned, I will pop it up in the Facebook group and also in the email that will come out with the recording. Um, so if you do want to watch the replays, just a reminder, the email will come out later this afternoon uh, with the list of the um, replays that are available so far um, and any of the offers that have come, uh, any of the things that they're offering at the moment. Um, and you can watch it in the Facebook group on replay, ongoing for as long as you need to. Um, so feel free to um, binge later tonight if you want to sit down with the wine and think about it. <laughs> Um, so again, thank you guys very much. Uh, the next session will start in approximately one hour and it will be Lisa who is talking about the owner's hoof care checklist. Um, so see you guys soon and uh, have a great afternoon. Okay, thanks. Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs>